Hey YouTube, Tim Unkert here. In this video, we're going to do an install of VS Code on a Chromebook. So let's do that. First, we need to enable the Linux development environment. So I'm going to go over here and click on the launcher. And I'm going to go and find my settings. And then in my settings, I can go on down on the left here and go to About Chrome OS. From here, I want to search for the Linux development environment under Developers and click Setup. Uh, it's going to give me a wizard here. I'm going to click Next. It's going to give me a username and a recommended disk size. If you want to change the username, it's probably easier to change now. The disk size is really easy to change. I mean, you can go to Custom and just drag in this around, or you can change it later. Uh, I'm going to keep both the same as is and click Install. And I'll let this run in real time just to show you about how long this would take on a poor internet connection, although high-speed internet, but a uh, poor internet connection and an Acer Chromebook from Walmart. Okay, once the Linux development environment is installed, this terminal will pop up. I can close out my settings now, and let's expand this terminal and increase the font size. And you'll note there's a note about the GPU-based rendering driver, Virgil. Uh, you can read that if you want. That's at the time of this recording. You might not even get that by the time you watch this video. I'm gonna do Control-Shift-V, just paste that in, so I'll have to deal with that. And I'm going to clear this out. Now, I want to make sure everything's up to date. I'm going to type sudo apt get update, then two ampersands sudo apt dash get dis dash upgrade. And I'll do a dash y flag to, uh, that's basically if there's any additional storage that the update and upgrade will take, then uh, it's not going to ask me that. It's just going to go ahead and do it. So anyways, I'm going to hit enter. I'll let that run on through and I'll come on back well, I'll just let it run through in real time. Oh, by the way, as this is running through, if you like videos on this channel, uh, please like and subscribe. It would help me out quite a bit. Thank you. Okay, that's run on through. I'm gonna open up a browser here and let's search for VS Code on a Chromebook. And the last uh, blog that uh, Visual Studio Code has is, was written in December 3rd of 2020. So it's a bit dated, but that being said, if you go on down here, it does recommend you, after you update, that you 
do install the GNOME keyring. I don't think you really have to do that anymore, but I do it anyways. It's it's easy to do. Uh, I'm just going to paste that in, hit enter, and that's going to take about 12 megabytes of space. And then uh, let that run through. Okay, so that's all run through. I like to uh, pin the terminal here uh, in case you want to use it. And then let's go to code.visualstudio.com and we'll, we'll have an option to download the .dev file. But here's the thing, if you are following this on an ARM-based Chromebook, you probably want to go to download and you'll notice you have options, the X64, that's for AMD and Intel-based Chromebooks, which is one that I'm on. Uh, you have an ARM32 and an ARM64. Now, when we installed Linux, we did install Debian Linux, so we're going to do the .deb file. I'm going to do the Intel-based. If you have, again, Intel-based or AMD-based chip, you want to do this one, but then um, if you have an ARM-based modern Chromebook, it would probably be ARM64. You can do a little bit of research yourself on that just to make sure. I'm going to download the .deb file. Okay, let's click show in folder. Wow, I have a lot of stuff here. Uh, I'm gonna right click and click install with Linux and then click install and okay. And I'm gonna go let that go ahead and install. Okay, so now if I go down here and I look here, I have my Linux apps. I don't see the VS Code icon yet. Once it installs, that will show up. Okay, now I saw it just pop in there. So if I want to right click and pin that to the shelf, because I'll be using that, and close this out, uh, close that out. And let's click this to start up VS Code. First time it starts up, it may take a little bit extra time because I do believe it creates a couple dot files and so on. All right, uh, now you have this walkthrough where you can go through and run getting started with VS Code. I'm just gonna mark that done. Uh, and basically you can start using VS Code. That's it. Um, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, again, please like and subscribe. It really does help. Thanks.